Vacoma has been rocking out over the last five years. If you live in America, you may know nothing about it. If you want to see what they've been up to, check out my video later this week where I look at their best of the best. But I've never left North America, so I'm stuck with their leftovers. Most of them 20 years old or more. But are they all bad? Well, no, no, of course not. Kinda. I've ridden most of the good ones in America, and I was able to compile a top 10. Barely, but I did it. So here we go. These are my top 10 coasters from Vacoma. Let me just say, the top 10 is pretty good, but there is a sharp drop off after this. I've ridden 54 Vacomas, but most of them are family coasters or really bad clones. I'll also be grouping some of these together if they're basically the same ride, and you'll see that right off the bat. Number 10, Revamp Boomerangs. The boomerang was huge starting in the mid 80s all the way through the 2000s, and you'll find these everywhere, especially mid-sized parks. People are sick of these, I get it, I am too, but there are a few of them that stand out above the rest. These are the ones that got new trains with the best restraints. I've ridden three of those, Sidewinder at Hershey Park, Flying Cobras at Carowinds, and the best one of all, Sea Serpent at Maury's Piers. This is one of the world's oldest boomerangs, but they've pumped it so full of Botox that it runs so smooth, and you get an amazing forceful ride experience with no rattle and no head pain. Ride these in the back row for the best experience. You get that max height on the first drop, and you get whipped through the inversions. The loop going backwards gives a stomach dropping feeling that's unique to a Vacoma boomerang. I wish all the boomerangs out there got the new trains. That one X Factor turns these from a nasty credit that nobody wants to ride to a ride you'll actually enjoy. Number 9. Wild Mouse at Idlewild. I spent so much time waiting for this to open, it's not even funny. The quest spanned over two days, and I could have done so many other cool things that didn't involve waiting for an old relocated Wild Mouse. But I did it, it's done, and I'm happy I got to ride it. It started out at Wiener Prater in Austria, then Alton Towers, before landing at this little family park in 1993. Its most defining feature is the slanted lift. It's something I don't think I've ever seen on any other coaster. The ride is kinda slow, and it's very jerky, especially at the end. They even warn you the last brake run is going to be violent, and they aren't joking. But it feels like a long ride, it's got some good drops. And after trying so hard to ride it, I wanted to like it. Maybe I convinced myself it was better than it was, but I enjoyed it. This was Vacoma's one and only Wild Mouse, and it's too bad they didn't build more. I know they were busy stacking boomerangs around the world in the mid 80s, but we could have used a few more of these. But since they didn't, this one remains a rare credit. Number 8. Invertigo at Kings Island. What's better than a standard boomerang? One that dangles you under the track. One of the weird quirks of this model is the face-to-face -face seating. There's not much point to this. Everyone goes forward and backwards on these anyway, so it doesn't matter which way you're facing. But I guess they want to make it so you're facing the people across from you, which is… a gimmick, I guess. I thought Invertigo was a lot smoother than your typical boomerang, though a lot of that could have had to do with it being at Kings Island. A park that's not run as well may not take as good care of it. I never got to ride Invertigo at Great America, or Stinger at Dorney Park, or Two-Face at Six Flags America. So this is all I have, and I thought Invertigo was a very enjoyable experience. It's just in a park where it gets buried under a dozen other coasters. Number 7. The Riddler Revenge at Six Flags New England Before 2018, this was your typical crappy SLC. I got to ride this as Mind Eraser in 2015, and no thanks. I came back in 2018 and saw it got rethemed. Plus, it had new trains. And this made me realize, SLCs don't have to be terrible. SLCs can be fun. Now, this still rattled me around, so I had to put up with that. But instead of getting shaken up and slamming my head side to side, my head was free and clear to sway as much as it wanted. Those vest restraints, replacing those bulky over-the-shoulder restraints, make Riddler Revenge a ride that I would get back in line to ride again. I had a super high opinion of this SLC, even though it's not perfect. I would, in fact, find a perfect SLC, but I'll save that one for later. Number 6. Blue Hawk at Six Flags Over Georgia Here's another Vacoma that absolutely sucked, and then it got renovated. Unlike Riddler Revenge, I didn't get to ride this as Ninja, but I've ridden it twice as Blue Hawk, an overhaul that happened in 2016, and it's one of my favorites in the park. It's pushing 3,000 feet long and stands 122 feet tall, so it's a pretty large-scale coaster, and it's got one of those rare custom layouts. This has weird inversions, especially that butterfly to start it off, and this might be the best head chopper coaster I've ever ridden. There are several moments, especially during the butterfly, where you feel like you just have to duck down. You really think you're going to lose your millen. I thought it was very smooth, and those vest restraints once again came to the rescue. You don't have to ride this defensively. Just enjoy the funky layout and all the forces it has to offer. Number 5. Phoenix at Dino's Wonder Wheel Amusement Park I admit I've never ridden Dragonflyer, but maybe you can lump those two into this list. Dragonflyer is a little longer, but they seem pretty similar. 
If you told me the smoothest and most graceful coaster I've ever ridden would be a Vekoma, I'd call you a liar and I wouldn't even feel bad. But truth be told, I got three rides on this in its opening month and it was amazing. It's still a family coaster, standing 68 feet tall and hitting 34 miles per hour. But there's a stomach dropping moment at the beginning and an overbank turn, and this thing just glides through the course. This was a perfect addition for Coney Island, and hopefully other smaller parks can get one of these. They're high capacity, compact, and just pure fun. I didn't think a family coaster could rank this high, but Phoenix deserves it. Number four, Batwing at Six Flags America and Nighthawk at Carowinds. I couldn't decide which one was better, and since they're near clones, I put them together. I love the Flying Dutchman as a concept, but the execution isn't always there. Nighthawk is relocated and over 20 years old, so it'll beat you up a little bit, especially on those final two corkscrews. I don't think it was nearly as bad as people say, but you still need to brace yourself. I know I rank this as the worst coaster in South Carolina, and I'm sorry to do it because it's not so bad. You also get an amazing setting, flying over the water. Batwing may have never been relocated, but it's maintained by Six Flags America, so prepare for a bumpy ride. If you're lucky enough to get to the park while this is open, it's worth a ride and probably the second best ride in the park. This has the inline twist at the end, and that runs a whole lot better than the course cruise. The bottom line is, these flying coasters could be better with a little TLC, but the flying experience holds up to get this all the way up at number four. Number three, the Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers. If you thought Riddler Revenge was a good SLC, wait till you ride the Great Nor'easter. This is everything you want in an SLC. Great trains with a fresh retrack. This is the apex of the SLC experience. And you know what? It's great. Not just great for a Vekoma SLC, great period. It reminded me a lot of writing a B&M Batman clone, only better. People talk about how the SLC has a good layout, but the track work and the restraints ruin it. And the Great Nor'easter takes care of both those problems. This was so intense and so smooth. I loved every second of it. And on top of all this, it's on a boardwalk. That means there's a lot crammed into a little space and you're flying around with near miss moments. It's expensive to ride, but you should do it. It costs 13 and a half rides on Zip and Pippin, but it's still somehow worth it. Well, maybe just once. Number two, the giant inverted boomerang. The ones that come to mind are the ones with the original trains. My childhood favorite, Deja Vu at Magic Mountain, and my adult favorite, Aftershock at Silverwood. Those staggered two across trains seem to run very well on the track, though I won't go as far to say they're butter smooth. Both of these had a pretty good rattle, but nothing to complain about. It's nothing compared to how Six Flags destroyed Goliath at New England, giving it those awful new trains. Again, you gotta ride the back. These towers are 191 feet tall, and the vertical lift will bring you up 177 feet in the back row, and then you're in free fall. The inversions are enormous. Then you get lifted up the second spike and get to do the whole thing backwards. If you ride the front, you get the maximum drop falling back first, a very unique experience on a coaster. These are so big, so fast, so intense, and if you can put aside the rattle, any thrill seeker will love the giant inverted boomerangs. The only one left in America is at the world's most remote park, that's not really a fact, that's just my opinion. So if you're passing through Northern Idaho for some reason, this is worth the trip. Come for Aftershock, stay for the rest of the awesome rides at Silverwood. Number one, X-Flight at Geauga Lake or Firehawk at Kings Island. This is really the tragedy of American Vekomas. The best one isn't even around anymore. When I rode this as X-Flight at Six Flags Worlds of Adventure in 2002, it was a top five overall coaster. I was blown away by my first flying coaster, running pretty smooth in its second season, and I really couldn't stop raving about it. X-Flight's Park goes the way of the dodo, and it makes the short trek downstate to Kings Island in 2007. I got to the park in 2016, and I was psyched to ride it again. It did not disappoint. Despite it being taken apart and put back together, and even the old green paint scheme bleeding through, Cedar Fair and Kings Island kept this running great. I got one last ride in 2018, right before its removal, and it was a good send-off. It sucks that the best of the three Flying Dutchmen had to get scrapped, but I guess it's best to die a hero than live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Someone said that once. So if you wanted to ride the best of the original Flying Dutchman, unless you're Marty McFly, you can't. You had 17 years to do it, so if you missed your window, too bad. There are my top 10 Vekomas in America. If you're from Europe or Asia, you're probably horrified by this list. And if you stay tuned later this week, you'll find out why. I don't think any of these would crack the worldwide top 10, but this is what we got. You may notice a couple that are missing from my list, Expedition Everest and Rock and Roller Coaster. They would almost definitely be top 10 worthy, but I'm really not sure if they'd be near the top or the bottom. So if you've ridden these two Disney coasters, let me know what you thought and where you would rank them. Let me know which American Vekoma is your favorite. And if you've been around the world, which one of those tops your list? Sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to sub for more content just like this. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, where you can chat with other fans of the channel, and my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. 
Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.